Right. We're good? Okay. Nine o'clock, uh, call to order, Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Okay, we do have a quorum here. Bob is excused and Bill is not here and not excused. Not excused. Okay, we have a lot of public today, and I'm assuming some people want to make some comments, and how do we do that, Chelsea? You can ask and then call them up one by one. Okay, and we have a three-minute three minute limit for public comment, because we have quite a few people. Are you going to time them? I got it. All right. Would anybody like to make comment in the public? Yes? Make sure you identify yourself, please. Good morning. My name is Natalie Richardson. I'm a Harbor House owner. Here on behalf of Dave Richardson, who I want to make sure no relation, <laughs> it's purely, purely coincidence, but was asked to share a letter on his behalf. He has a charter this morning and was unable to be here. He says, I first moved to Fort Myers Beach in 1990, but now live on the mooring field and have since its inception around 15 years ago. Not only as my home, but for the charter sailing boat, I was on the town's original Anchorage Advisory Committee as its initial chairman, so my mooring field experience goes from its start through today, where I am one of the few people designed as a liveaboard, designated as a liveaboard. The mooring ball is simply a permanent anchor that does not provide any other benefits like utilities allow you to even ride out hurricanes without your boat incurring much damage. Town's mooring field is a wonderful hurricane hole to shelter your boat, as I have been here for six hurricanes and major tropical storms without any issues. Town began the mooring field because boaters who originally anchored out here were irresponsible with their vessels, as well as their behavior, so it was like the wild, wild west and in need of regulation. The reason I continue living in the mooring field is it is the last freedom left. It has the same feeling you get from a small college town where everyone looks out for everybody else. It's pretty common that when one person goes to the grocery store, they ask their neighboring boats if they need any supplies, and you end up making a run for others. People here come from all walks of life, from 20-somethings to former engineers to corporate dropouts, hipsters and retirees, so it is quite an eclectic group, and an impromptu cocktail party can break out at any time. For me, the best part of being a mooring field resident is leaving, then coming back as I charter my boat almost every day. With the COVID-19 crisis, my girlfriend Miranda and I took off for about a month and just sailed around the East Coast as there was nothing else to do, while most others were trapped inside their houses. My friends said unprintable things to us, relating that our coronavirus experience was much better than theirs. Moving to tax dollars and fiefdom. Town does a great job in managing the mooring field, including the pump out boat, and Harbor Master Austin is terrific, so it's a very welcoming place. Most mooring field boaters are short timers, though there are a few permanent residents, and I am one of those. The current upland provider is Matanzas Inn at 414 Crescent Street that provides us with restrooms, showers, and laundry facilities, and they do a great job as well, as their current services to seem adequate. <clears throat> I know the town is exploring a new mooring field building at Bayside Park to provide expanded amenities like these. I personally do not see the need. Why build a million dollar building for 30 people? I understand the beach is changing, but many people like me already have showers on board their boats and the Harbor House right across from the Bayside Park made an offer to have restrooms, showers, and laundry there. So that new building seems like it might be an awful waste of taxpayer dollars. I know there's talk about the town expanding the mooring field, but today, in early June, as I look out from my boat, I can see roughly 36 of the mooring field balls. I'm almost done. There are boats at just 17, and it looks like this in the off-season every year. So I don't see the need to expand the mooring field or construct the building. What really bothers me about the plan the town is considering is that it's already into its second Bayside Park design, including the building, but they have yet to ask anyone from the general public for their opinions. There is the democracy. This is typical of government historically throughout time. In the 1500s, we had a small castle that was good enough. We've all read okay. this. We've all read it. We wanted it in the public okay. record in the all recording right. for the meeting. It. It's time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Richardson. Thank you. 
you for letting us speak today. Um, I think we're all here because this uh, started as a building that the town council decided earlier this week to uh, pump the brakes on a little bit and explore other options for Morningfield Upland Services. Um, there's been a lot of questions going back and forth through different committee members and different committee meetings on what is what can be done and what can't be done. Uh, part of what I'd like to share with you are trying to fill in some of those gaps. We found out yesterday, I think, uh, going back to 2017 Resolution 17-39, one of the concerns for that area uh, where this building was going was restrooms. There are three restroom buildings with a total of seven stalls down at Marina Village, the public facilities that were put in in 2018, I believe. Um, you can pull the resolution up, but there are seven total. There's a family room, a men's room with three stalls, and a ladies' room with three stalls. So we do have restrooms up on that part of the island, right next to the park. They're designated as public restrooms in Marina Village. Uh, one of the other large questions that kept arising was the crown. Can we use ground floor or can't we use ground floor? Uh, all of our research has shown that ground floor can be used as long as a commercial, for commercial use, not for living as long as it's built to hurricane codes. Uh, the, all of the restrooms at Marina Village are on the ground floor. The space at the Harbor House is on the ground floor and built to the current hurricane codes and has hurricane doors. So it is a hurricane-proof building in commercial use with showers and restrooms, laundry facilities, it's really acceptable. So all the conversations about do we need to be on the second floor to get services, not if the buildings are built to the code. One of the things I wanted to share is trying to decide whether we're pulling it in or taking it out. I don't know that the town cares. I think that the mooring committee probably needs to take a look at the current services and what that cost is at $89,000 a year, if I understand it correctly. We bring it in-house, or if you were to bring it in-house, we're going to have to hire somebody to man that station. And 12 hours a day and $15 an hour is going to cost you sixty five grand. Services will probably take $100 a day, which will push you over hundred grand. We still aren't talking about taxes, insurance, utilities, or the cost of the facility. A number of these things, I think, need to be considered on whether we take it in or we use another provider shared services. I'm sure there's other shared service providers out there. If you have an issue with the current one, I haven't seen a lot of pushback on the current service provider. I hear it, but I don't really see it. Maybe I've missed it. Um, other locations I think we maybe should consider. We have a right-of-way under the bridge, just like the right-of-way they talked about building the three-story building on. There's a number of other options, and have we looked at Bay Oaks Park? There's a lot going on there. I think that would be a strong consideration. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you. Anybody else? There's another opportunity at the end. Anybody? Thank you very much uh, for the comments. Appreciate it. Uh, let's move on to approval of minutes. We have January 15th, February 19th, and May 15th, 2020. Uh, Sam Lurie, I move that we accept. Uh, we should probably do them one at a time. I move that we accept the January minutes. A second. A home second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sam Lurie, for the record, move that we accept the February minutes. For a second. Mike Ratliff, second. I should have asked if there was any discussion on the other one, but is there any discussion on February 19th? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, and May 15th, 2020. Sam Lurie, for the record, I move we accept the May minutes. Go home second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Let's move on to Morningfield and staff report. We have a lot of months of staff report, probably. So. Yeah, I got it pretty limited here, just the basic stuff. Um, I'm sorry, this is Austin Gilchrist, uh, Town of Fort Myers Beach Harbor Master. Um, starting out we've got all of our systems in from uh, 
from the engineering company to go ahead and start our process in switching out the mooring systems. Uh, we do have all brand new systems. All I'm waiting on now is just my dive gear to get serviced. I'm just waiting on a part coming in. So hopefully this week our dive operation should start. And uh, we're going to start with the first 20 systems and have all those replaced and then pull out the, uh, the systems that are there now and, and uh, remanufacture them and get them back up to spec of, of with the shackle system and so forth, get them cleaned up and uh, get them renumbered and things like that. Um, but other than that, uh, we got the rub rail, the dinghy dock. Uh, I know there was an issue with the, uh, the structure support and the growth going on on that uh, with people's dinghies rubbing up against it. We, uh, we had a, uh, a float fabricated and we put on some, uh, some wooden buffers to help people from stop rubbing up against it. And it should keep the growth and everything off of people's boats as well. But we'll continue to monitor that and adjust it to anything that might occur with that. Um, there was a porta potty installed under the bridge for uh, for public use as well. Um, so far, that's been keeping clean and uh, so forth. We check it every morning for that. The that is, I believe, provided by Matanzas. Yeah, and there it's maintenance and staying clean uh, pretty much weekly. I believe the scheduling is on that two weeks biweekly. I I presume. Um, let's see uh, the pump outs. Okay, so. We did cease pump outs during the pandemic for a small amount of time. Uh, we did bring up our jurisdictional lines and we drew those a thousand feet out, which was already dictated by uh, the town's uh, jurisdictional lines. Uh, those have been apparent on LEPA for a while. If anybody likes to bring up and actually look at our jurisdictional lines, we've been having a couple of discrepancies with people out in the Anchorage field, but uh, it tends to be people are starting to shift and move to get into the uh, into the jurisdictional lines so they can get pump out services from the town. Um, let's see, we've got uh, two new. Uh, New uh, oil spill responders trained up this last month. Uh, they got certified, so we're up to par with that as well with our oil spill response. Um, we've started the moving of vessels in the field, and this has been going on for the last couple months as far as the classification of the vessel, whether it be uh, liveaboard status, transient status, or, uh, or using the ball as wet storage. What I'm trying to do is open up the front of the field to make it more acceptable for people coming in and out and getting them more accessibility to the dinghy area where their services are provided. And with the wet storage in the front of the back field, we'll utilize that for wet storage. And that gives them easier access to the dinghy docks at uh, behind tops over here off of uh, Gulf Beach Road there. Um, so there's only been one or two people coming back and trying to uh, argue that. But basically, as I'm telling them, this is something new that we're doing. And what I'm trying to do now is just get the front 20 switched out. And then from there, make adjustments according to each vessel uh, and what their preferences are. Um, like I said, right now, we're pretty flexible with balls, so we can pretty much move people where they would like to go. Uh, within regards of our procedure or operating procedures of what we're trying to achieve. Um, I wouldn't like to move all the boats around as far as wet storage and stuff like that. But for the majority of people have special requests, you know, we're trying to fulfill those special requests. But at the time, I would like to get the first 20 cleared out so I can get those systems switched out. Um, we are meeting with uh, Department of Natural Resources and Lee County Sheriff's Department. We've also been in contact with the Coast Guard as far as getting in line with procedures in the area of what their procedures are as far as derelict vessels, pump outs, safety checks, so forth. Um, we're trying to get everybody in uh, an apply, uh, compliance with ordinances on the water, uh, particularly in the mooring field, making sure everybody's safety equipment's up to, up to speed, making sure their, everybody's bilges are working, making sure their vessels are seaworthy and also their MSD stations are, uh, are in operating order. We're starting to enforce more pump outs as far as every three days, anybody living in the field is going to have to require pump outs. Uh, the requests and stuff are still, uh, are still under um, works now to where you can call in and, and request a pump out, but we will be enforcing mandatory pump outs uh, due to just individuals that we haven't had uh, logged in, in as pump outs. They either claim they take it in or whatever, but I need to start documenting 
every pump out that's going on out there. Um, see, uh, other than that, uh, it's basic operations. The pump outs we're doing about four to five a day, I believe. Uh, basically, the majority is outside of the field. A lot of the marinas have been requesting we come and help them out because they're having issues with their pump out services. And I know that the, uh, the enforcement in the marinas are stepping up as well. Uh, I know in the past I've brought up that there's been an issue with the marinas in the area and um, only one or two people in those facilities pumping out at a 30, uh, 30 occupancy marina. So we've been addressing that problem and that's starting to be more apparent uh, with the scheduled request of pump outs that we're getting within private marinas now. That's it. I have a list. So to piggyback on what Chelsea O'Reilly, Public Works Director for Fort Myers Beach, um, to piggyback off of what Austin was saying about that three-day rule, that's in our harbor management plan, um, that vessels do have to be pumped out every three days. So that's not an administrative thing that we're just pushing on people, that, that's in, in writing. Um, a lot of stuff has happened since um, working diligently during this, this pandemic, so um, it's hurricane season. So, of course, we keep that in the back of our minds at all times. Um, any we've made preparations. Um, and, of course, it, in the event that we do have a name, named storm, knock on wood, um, as you all know, the field would be open up to the public. Um, we have received, I've, I've gotten notice, the WCIND grant um, that we get every year for Marine Patrol. Um, I did get notice that uh, we will be awarded that for $50,000 next fiscal year. Our match is 15. It's been put in the budget. Also, in the meantime, um, we acquired another grant, which, which Council approved, which essentially subsidizes any staff person's time that they spend pumping out other boats. Um, and so that's a reimbursable grant, and that's through the DEP that we got that. Um, and that, that's, that's a huge bonus um, for the town because we track our hours spent pump out, Austin and his staff. Um, so that's a reimbursable thing that we can go after. Um, the expansion. Just got notice. So, so we have the dinghy, the dinghy dock submerged land lease. I'm sorry, Mike, I can't see you. We have the dinghy dock submerged land lease. We have the more the current mooring field submerged land lease. And then this this new one would be new submerged land lease. In order to simplify everything, we're looking to incorporate those as one. Okay, so then that would mean one reporting document to the state, one payment for the submerged land lease, et cetera. So the expansion, we are at the nearing the end of that permitting process. Um, what has to be done now is, is to collate the surveys that were done. Um, DEP is requesting new surveys of the, of the existing facilities, which countering because they told us differently in the very beginning. Um, and so what's going to happen next is a 500 foot notice, the expansion. So we, there has to be a notice go, that goes out. They have, 20, I think, 21 days um, to respond. That's a public notice. Um, and, of course, no construction is happening. This is just permitting and, and acquiring that area for potential expansion in the event the town chooses to do that. Um, so that's nearing completion. It's taken over a year. I think we started this. So um, there's that. And then... We have, um, I think I emailed you all the notice that we sent out relaying the liverboards and the wet slip change. There were shifting vessels. Um, so that, that verbiage was also provided to town council in the monthly update for public works. Um, council yesterday, or Monday, the days, Monday, as you all know, put, put the brakes on Bayside Park process. Um, at, at the time that they put the halt, um, the consultant was working on um, answering or at least presenting, putting together a presentation 
to um, counter all of the questions that the council had raised. But as of right now, they have shifted their focus now to the 30% Bay Oaks. Um, I actually have a tentative meeting planned Monday with Doug. Um, I'm waiting for him to confirm that for from Matanzas go over their alternative proposal. And lastly, I hope if I don't, something else doesn't pop up. Um, we do have we have two derelict vessels, not derelict, two vessels that have an outstanding balance in the field. They're not derelict. They're just two vessels afloat that have substantial outstanding balances. Our legal team, town attorney, is pursuing those. We have a third one that we're keeping an eye on. They have an outstanding balance, but it doesn't. There's a threshold that cost us to pursue the legal side. So um, this third one is right on the cusp of that, and we, we may, when council comes back, we may be looking to pursue that one. How much outstanding balance are we talking about? On which one? Two. I mean, uh, it's what's the probably threshold? We're at $1,100, or I'm sorry, $11,000 on the combined two that are over right now, and we're at $700 on the one that uh, that isn't at the threshold. 11000 together. 11000 for the two that are in delinquent. So like 5000 6000 a piece. I got, I got, yeah, got 10000 I'm sorry, what? Nine or 10. What's that? For the one, for the one that's been out. We have ten thousand uh, ten thousand dollars uh, delinquent on the one that's been out there for a while, and the current one that has fallen under delinquents at I believe about eleven $1 hundred dollars okay. uh, on delinquent. Now, the one that's at ten thousand, that is the one that the feds had to do a, you know their due diligence on. The Coast Guard had to do their due diligence on. So that's the only reason it's it's gone on for so long. Is that the one on Monday that the attorney mentioned that he's. No. Looking on eviction, that's a different one? No, that's a different one. Which one is that? That's the third one. Okay. That's the third one that's not too far behind. I suggest I've reached out, and I, pardon? The attorney pays more attention to the $10,000 one, maybe. No. Oh, it, oh. It's a process, okay. you, filing the paperwork and, and putting the lien on the vessel. Um, ultimately, the goal would be to, to acquire the vessel through the lien process and then sell it and recoup the funds that the town is they're working on it yes and um, to that point Matanzas has gotten everybody on the first of the most probably 95 percent of the vessels on the first day of the month payment I, I had a question about that was were people notified because we were not my understanding as I only learned of it by looking at my credit card bill that it was a weird figure and we called them Monday. I spoke to, so, I spoke to Matanzas um, and they were to reach out to everybody and notify. Maybe, maybe they would have notified us. It was like a week after we'd paid or 10 days. So. Matanzas was to notify. Okay. Actually, I have a couple of questions I should have directed to Austin probably. Austin, in moving the boats around in the anchorage, um, a couple of concerns come up. Um, well, let me put it in the form of a question. Each boat sometimes is different. Like there may be boats out there that have a draft of six feet or more. Uh, so they need to be placed in places where uh, obviously that can be accommodated. Uh, is that being taken into consideration? With the relocation of the vessels, the consideration of the vessels was going to be the swing radius and the uh, and the draft of the vessel as well. With that, every ball is charted and documented with the depth uh, on each ball. So we'll go through our, our charts, and that's why we've designated uh, each boat of where it's at, depending on the vessel particularly. Uh, Yes, so to answer the question, yes, that is considered uh, within and then within the distance of the channel as well. Um, that's being taken into consideration as far as with the vessels. And then my follow up question is about balls one and two. Those balls, uh, I think, are the ones which we've always felt in the past were the ones that uh, larger vessels would be based upon if necessary. Yeah, that is correct. So now, where do they fall into this plan? Okay, so with ball one, 
I think we all know the history of Ball One and then uh, what happened with Ball One. And we do have, I believe it's uh, four, uh, four uh, systems there that, that take in our, biggest, our bigger swing radiuses. So basically what I'm trying to do with those is ball one and two, what I would like to do is leave those open and just in, in dire needs that we need to use them. My ultimate plan is to be use ball one and two for a tie-up station to get in and to uh, you originally tie up there coming into the field, go into the uh, office, do all your paperwork, get your ball assignment and get everything that you need to get, go back out to your vessel and then more to your assigned, to your assigned ball. The, uh, the current system right now, people are just coming into the field and mooring wherever the ball is open and then going in uh, to the office and getting a different ball assignment and having to go back out to their ball, move their boat around or whatever. So what I'm trying to get uh, in procedures is utilizing ball one and two right there as just a check-in system unless we do not have room to uh, to bring in larger vessels, is what I'm saying. We will still utilize it for a working system, but until that time occurs, we're going to be utilizing it as a, as a check-in system. So can I dovetail with that? We, as you all know, this dates back to years ago. We had a management system come in, a presentation to you all. It was DACWA. Okay. Probably eight months ago, um, in the midst of reviewing the procedures and, and everything, mooring field, um, we determined that some type of management system is needed, digital ma management system. Um, we had reached out to DACWA eight or so months ago. At the time, I did not feel that they met our needs. We're, we're a unique community. We have unique needs. This is a unique field, et cetera. Um, so, over the last eight months, what's transpired is we've reached out and I don't, I couldn't even tell you the number of demos that I had done with different management systems. Key component is the user interface, the end user, the patron coming into the field. That, that's, we want that to be seamless, to be easy. Um, since then, I reached back out to DACWA and surprisingly enough, they meet most, if not all, of our needs with the seamless user interface. So I have vetted with our finance director. We have worked to some terms with DACWA, and we are looking to implement that system as soon as possible. That provides the opportunity to um, the the they have different you know variations that you can you can do the simple one, you can do the pro one, or you can do the super fancy elite one. Um, we're choosing to do the pro, which provides marketing, provides customization, all of the reporting aspects that our finance team needs. Um, and so when it comes to the user, you know, Jane Doe coming in from Sarasota into the field, she can get online and upload and fill out contract, the request, the agreement, et cetera. And then, again, it's no paper, goes to the office, processed, reviewed, make sure all the T's are crossed, I's are dotted, and we can do it that way instead of this pen and paper forcing people to go into the office right now. Um, and so, go ahead, Ted. Uh, is this, would you ex explain how this interfaces with the reservation system? Um, essentially, you would request, because we cannot, you cannot do a reservation. That's our submerged le land lease does not provide that. So you request reservation, and it takes human interaction on the back end to confirm the availability or not. Now, we can limit that request out to three days to a week, um, but it provides the digital part where you all have identified in the strategic plan, which we'll go into later, but um, I think it'll really help with that interaction with the public especially in times like now, uh, limiting hum human interaction uh, better. Would there be an assignment of ball at that point or only after they got here? But on the back end, that human interaction would assign them a, a certain ball. or Before they arrived. Yes. Thank you. Um, Chelsea, so that 
information would then be interfaced back to our current upland provider? Uh, uh, this is, we were working the kinks out with, with DACWA over the last two weeks, getting our finance director on the same, you know, his terms. Um, we have not signed that contract with them yet. Um, but we're looking to do that hopefully this week or next um, and get it implemented. Now's the perfect time because um, the field, we're not at full capacity. We can, it's a learning curve. Uh, it might be a train the trainer, Doc will train me and then I train Matanzas. Um, it might be a, a Matanzas and myself all in one in Austin. We haven't gotten that far. Um, but it's the system will definitely improve um, the customer service of, of the mooring field. Like for the record, um, I wanted to jump back into some of the comments that Mike was making about, and we were talking about grouping the boats, um, because I've discussed this with Chelsea, and I just wanted to put it on the public record, and it kind of goes back to Natalie reading her letter from Dave Richardson. Um, I have a concern about grouping the boats that have nobody on them in the backfield uh, for safety. Uh, because as, as we all know, some of us that have cruised, and Dave was, was saying, you know, if you're going to the grocery store, you say, hey, buddy, I'm going to pick up something for you. One of the things about having boats in a field with people that are on them and not having people on them is a safety thing for if you notice something on a, on a boat that nobody's on, something's happening, it can be reported. If they're all kind of grouped off, we don't have a presence in the mooring field every day. Uh, if we did, it might be a different thing, but Austin's not out there. He's out there like three and a half days a week. So I have a concern safety-wise of grouping everybody where people aren't going through the mooring field to keep kind of an eye on boats. So I just wanted to make that, I, I've discussed that with Chelsea as a concern, I wanted to make that in the public and record. We have, I mean, we've, we've got the Marine Patrol unit out there. Uh, they, they have worked with Austin on doing inspections, making sure, com, you know, compliance with all of the vessels in the field. Um, ideally, I, I, I would love to get Austin out there full time, but we're not at that point. Um, and there used to be a full-time harbor master position, um, but coming into this position, um, we, we did a little bit of reorganization. Absolutely, these these changes, um, just as easily as we made the change, we can undo the change. But we will be assessing everything that we've been putting in place, and if if it doesn't work, then you know we'll look at it and make an alternative if need be. This is something we want to try and see if it works, and if it doesn't, then you know. We'll come up with another plan. I, uh, back on that. Um, with, the, with reference to the way the field used to be, and since the field has gotten started, uh, within the last four, four years, I don't believe that we have had one crime in the mooring field that's been documented. There has been citations written as far as uh, anchor lights, registrations and stuff of that nature, but as far as theft and and any reported crimes, that has declined almost 100% uh, over the last four years. We have been uh, implementing such procedures to weed out the, the individuals that were causing problems in the backfield. And not only that, we are now in communication with uh, Lee County Sheriff's Department and stepping up patrols and actually letting them know what our intentions are, and ex especially in situations like this, we've already let them know that we are putting unoccupied boats within this region of the field. So when they are on patrol, to do uh, more patrols in that area. And not only that, we did pick this area because it is closest to Salty Sam's, which is a populated area uh, pretty much all the time. Um, there are vessels, uh, at the marina there that have been there for years who do let me know if something out of the ordinary happens back there. So there are eyes in the area as far as uh, on the weekends and then the days that I'm off. And not only that, but the uh, there are still occupied people back in the field. There are people that do prefer to be back there and they are considered within the, the 10 live aboard. So there are still people in the field and all the concerns that were an issue in the past, we've addressed before we've actually taken action and moving anybody in that area. But if anything happens from this day forth, I mean, all we can really do is combat uh, anything that's coming at us. 
Well, it wasn't just crime that I was interested in. It was mm -hmm. like if an alarm's going off in the boat or oh, yeah, yeah. a roller furler comes off or, you know, yeah. just, just things like that. It, it wasn't just crime. Yeah. No, but like I said, there are people still living back there that, that prefer being that close to Salty Sam's. We got a call this, I actually got a call this week and I had to come out to redo a, a bridal line that had come off one of our boats that, that has been abandoned back there. So it's... Uh, it, Backfield has really stepped up from what it has been in the last few years. Austin, so let me just ask this point blank. Is the motivation for this to put the boats that are typically in wet storage in the back part of the field, is that to free the front part of the west field? That is to free it up for more transient, uh, like I said, to bring a more, bring the uh, availability closer to the amenities. That makes sense. Um, it's just those boats aren't being used. So basically they're sitting in the front of the field right now uh, when we could rent those systems out to people to make it easier for them to get to the, uh, get to the amenities of where they're at. But like I said, we do have the, uh, the launch over here that is closer than the amenities that uh, provide for liveaboards. And I explained to the lady on the phone yesterday that we have parking area over there and the way that that dock is set up, it's, it's set up for uh, loading supplies. Um, so which dock are you referring to now? Uh, right here, the kayak launch. Kayak right launch. Yeah. Golf Beach Road. Yeah, Golf Beach Road there. Okay. In other words, what used to be behind what was tops and pieces out. for the record Austin I had a question about all the you got all that we got sent all the comments and every one of them was friendly professional except there was one who was concerned about window of time for the pump out do you know what I'm talking about where there was a an issue with somebody said they had to wait around all day so I was wondering are you doing windows of time for the pump outs that you're telling people or how do you yeah, organize our, that? Our window has always been between uh, 10 and 2 o'clock, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, since the epidemic happened, uh, or the pandemic happened, I'm sorry, we've been getting out on the water at 9 o'clock to get out there a little earlier to get off of the water sooner. But we are always on call until 2 o'clock. If, uh, if something is missed or if somebody doesn't get a reservation in at time, there has been times where I've had to go back out to, uh, to service boats. So... I don't know in particular what uh, what happened in that situation, but uh, like I said, I'm I'm pretty flexible in what I do. I'm not here to uh, discourage anybody or anything like that. Um, I'm just here as a public servant to take care of what needs to get taken care of in the field. So I don't. I mean, the window's there. Definitely, the window's there. That's what that's what I was wondering. So but, uh, that was just a one-off thing. It we're always like. available, basically. Thanks. I had another question on the pump outs because you were talking about. Um, thousand feet foot the, the stuff with the town and guess I'm taking it that we were doing outside of that limit before and now we're just doing inside of the town limit now yes we were Is servicing my, some vessels um, in Hurricane Pass and okay. just outside of our jurisdictional limits and um, reeling that back in yeah, I just and, wanted a clarification on that that's what I thought I understood those that are not within the mooring field again they pay the five dollar per ticket right. now um, i did have a call the other day from island what's the, um, island bay marina island bay marina and um, it's my understanding that their pump out station has been down for some time so really? i know okay. that um, we'll be servicing the vessels that are um, in their marina and then i i think we got another call from moss moss we go to uh, pink shell moss marina times especially super yachts that can't get into the marinas we'll uh, we'll board the yachts and and them as well. Oh, and, and so I'm clear, if a vessel is outside of boundaries, they come within our jurisdictional boundaries, they're out there on the hook, as long as they are within our jurisdictional boundaries, we will service them. We've had some issues lately with um, a couple people and they weren't happy that we reined our, our boundaries back in. But they have since made accommodations to get within our boundaries. Well, it might be something to think about again because years ago, I mean, I've been on the committee since 2007, and we tried to get the county yep. to come together with us to try to do exactly what we're talking about, going outside of the jurisdiction. We were never successful. Is there a fee for these that are outside the field? 
It's if they're outside of the field, it's five dollar. It's a five dollar pump out ticket that they can. Town hall is currently closed, but they can purchase from Matanzas. Uh, and there, there's no expiration on these tickets right now. Uh, quite a low rate. <laughs> so, well, we are limited because our pump out bill was received via grant, the Clean Vessel Act. So that is the most we can charge. Um, for I think it's a three-year period from the date we we acquired that boat, and that three years is 2021, so early 2021. Um, as a side note, you know we have been knee-deep in budget uh, for the last month, it seems like, and um, I think I see numbers in my sleep. But we, in part of budget, we look at all of our fees, everything, you know, anything and everything that could be impacted. So. Um, we are doing some some comps, other uh, mooring fields around, just as comparisons and seeing where we fall within the, you know, compared to others and what amenities they provide, et cetera. So um, depending on your your schedule that you choose to pursue this summer, um, we can bring those numbers back at, at you know, a later date. Um, I have a question. I've had some um Discussion with me about the parking permits for the liveaboards. Yes. Is there anything that we can work out with that? Because right now they're having to do monthly ones where they used to be able to do a term of like six months. Right. And and I did have an email over um, this the time that you guys have been on recess. As of right now, the length of your contract is the length of how long you can get your per parking permit. Part of reviewing all of these fees is seeing what other municipalities do with, with people who park. Um, the one gentleman who reached out, um, I know many other people have um, contacted private businesses downtown to try to work a deal amongst themselves for long-term parking. Um, but as of right now, the length of your contract is the length of how long you can choose, uh, how long your parking permit is. Just like if you go to ho a hotel, stay at the hotel for a week, you can park at the hotel for a week. That's what you've paid for. So um, it's part of the assessment that we're looking at what alternatives others do. Um, I think you guys are going to be surprised at what other marinas do and how much they charge. Well, for and, and that goes back to the length of the contract, too, because I know that we just changed to the monthlies. And um, I still would like to try to get back to a six month. You can, you can pay for a six no, month. No, but without paying because, I mean, we have we had a credit card on file. A lot of people do. Um, so I don't understand why we can't do that. I would like, I, I it's, um, you know, for people to go in every month and pay. I mean, I'm not going to pay six months in advance. You don't usually. Well, we, and we have some people that choose to. Yeah. So it's, it's. Preferences on the the boater, but um, that that's not an administrative thing. That's that's a contract thing. Pay for the month, and that's your contracts for the month. Another thing I want to bring up, just as a procedural thing, that I think we need to look at. This was um, beginning of April. These were put on boats when we were having the COVID nineteen. And um, I think we need to come up with a procedure that's a little bit better for notification. I know that we need to put notifications on boats, but this is green electrical tape that was put on my fiberglass. And the beauty of DACWA is we would have an email system that I can email blast with a click of a button. And but we might still need to do this. Absolutely. And my, my, I guess my point, too, was we go out two or three times a week, and it was in the process of tearing off because we were sideways to the wind, and it was like this, which if it was raining, it would. Yeah, we, uh, sorry to cut you off, but we've since gotten Ziploc baggies with sand. So and I would suggest, I, that's perfect, and I would suggest also using the blue painter's yeah, tape. No, that was just a last-minute thing, oh. what we had, so we went out and we tried to put it on wherever would accept it. But... As you can see, I mean, it, was it wasn't, the, wasn't the best thing. It was just under a clinch, but from now on, it's uh, Ziploc baggies and sand. Is what I just, I just thought that we should have a better procedure. But, so I appreciate that, we, that we've addressed that. Thank you. Anybody else for, for Chelsea? Yes. Okay. <laughs> a couple of things. One is uh, the submerged land lease, yes. all, merging all three of those. Are they compatible? Are they, are they all 
pretty similar template if we ended up state prefers us to have them as one okay so that's we're, we're working on that yes you'll just modify whatever differences are you'll consolidate modify those. the permit to incorporate all three of the the areas any discussion about question for you about uh, Bayside money or anything right now or is that a different topic yeah. do you what was the 30 percent the cost of the 30 percent study for Bayside building no I'd have to go back and look at it I seem like it was like a lot but I contract to for the entire design Bayside Park is right under two hundred thousand dollars that includes 30 60 90 100 okay so when they did um, Bay Oak, and they they approved like forty nine thousand or something like that, approximately fifty thousand. That was only for the, the 30%, first thirty percent. Only okay. for thirty percent so of Bay Oak. So, okay, we're not out of line with that then. Okay. Um, the bathrooms at Snug Harbor. Mr. Richardson was saying there's bathrooms over there open to the public. I thought that was for the restaurant. That's for the general public. Anybody that wants them. Our community development um, staff are looking into it and confirming. Okay. Um, and or, but um, that'd be nice as an addition to anything. Absolutely. Maybe he'll, you'll get a chance at the end if you could elaborate on that. That would be good. Um, Aqua, did you discuss with Matanzas at all about? I have what, not. Okay. When 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 we do, maybe discuss with them what level, you know, what when they prefer, whether it's the the limited, the pro, or the. The other ones, depending on what, what I can tell there. you, the 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 high end one um, is not feasible for the town and with with our budget. The pro one, um, and again, confirming with our finance director, um, it meets their needs, and it, in in my opinion, um, it, it meets the needs of management side. When will you be talking to them about it at, at some point? Uh, I sure. haven't even executed the contract, so okay. Um, Soon, absolutely this summer. I figured it's it's kind of slow, so um, be an opportune time. Another thing that Mr. Richardson was saying from Harbor House there, I, we always wanted to build restrooms on the ground, wh wherever they were, and that's not permitted? It, so... It depends okay. on the type of building. It depends on the flood zone. If you are in a V flood zone, you cannot put anything on ground level. If you are, which Harbor House is in, it, is in an A zone, it can flood proof, okay. which that is a whole process in itself. So, um, like I said, Monday we're gonna I'm taking our building official, um, and we're gonna go down and speak with hopefully if Doug confirms um, me on site and and see what it is that has been offered, um, and and understanding so far based on the um, alternative that he provided was that any <clears throat> any construction. Would have to be paid for by the town we can choose to either lease or purchase <clears throat> so i i will be vetting that as directed by council um, and we will be presenting that back i got to talk to to the town manager um, either through you all and then to town council or, or figure out how um, they want to to you know, do that should i go with you i don't think we're at that point yet and, and to, to point one other thing, um, I know the gentleman came up in public comment. Um, underneath the bridge is state right of way. That is not town right of way. So any any putting the porta potty there, I had to get right. We need to build one so on the other side. No. Our side. Oh, our bridge, our side. Okay. Anything any under that bridge is state right of way. So just to just to put that porta potty there, I had to get writing approval from the state. Um, look, it's the state is. Uh, interesting to work with so <laughs> I have one more for Austin real quick Sam for the record um, if we use ball number one and two for our check-in areas possible that we could relabel that or is it going to be unnecessary with DACWA it's still going, well yeah I mean I don't know what the procedures of DACWA of how that's going to take place and if people you know we do have people who don't work with technology so we'll have to address that as it comes to but as far as ball one and two I would still like to label them one and two just to not mix those up with anything else uh, they still are going to be up for rent just as any other system is but um, but I would like to keep them uh, pretty much clear until we need to rent them out 
think that's a great idea, especially if we could paint the balls a different color, an orange okay. or something, and have some kind of signage saying for registration only. Check that would in. be really helpful. Okay. Okay. With DOFLA, they do provide a welcome packet. Um, like it, like the, when you request a reservation, we can do like an automated thing that, you know, you get an email back with information. Same thing if you check out. They, you know, a couple days later, they say, thank you for coming, you know, a customer service level that we're kind of missing the follow through right now because um, we want we want return clientele. Anything else, Sam? No, thanks. Greg, do you have anything? Right now. At this point, other than when it's possible, but if you think the Harbor House is a option, we'd like to tour it, yeah, and see it ourselves. It's not, not just read about it. I'd like to see it. I will discuss that with the owner today. Do know the one thing is we can't do it as a group. Correct. It would have to be a would have to be individual. Yes. Do know that. Maybe Kathy would go and you could write a report after or something. Or, or one of us could go, certainly. Um, yeah. I know Austin touched on the systems. Remember that federal grant that we applied for two years ago? It was finally approved. Council approved it. Hey. We're moving forward. 55 new systems coming in. Hey. Uh, brand new systems. So it's been a long one, but uh, fortunately, Council supported us, and, and you're moving forward. Right. So, deal. Mike, do you have anything else at this time? Uh, well, just a couple of brief things. Uh, referring to Harbor House, I actually looked through the window yesterday, and there is a bathroom on the ground floor, that empty area there. Uh, secondly, I just want to clear a couple of things up here as relates to uh, the Bayside Park. Uh, I looked back through all of our minutes. Uh, I think the initial thing uh, started probably as early as September 19th, uh, according to minutes, when uh, you know staff brought to us that the Matanzas contract was under review. That there was at least some interest in town hall about bringing all of this in-house, which obviously there still is. My concern was is when uh, our committee met and uh, we were presented with information about potential sites, nothing was ever specific. I did go back and look at the correspondence from Mr. Spear and Smith. Most of those we received in May. Now, this was after uh, we had, I think, felt that our only option was a site. So I just want it to be understood that our committee, at least, and I will only speak for myself, I should say, in no way were we trying to ramrod through the Bayside Park idea. Uh, in fact, as I recall, in all of our discussions, it was never even discussed that Harbor House was an alternative, a specific alternative. I'm glad it is. I think it's a viable alternative. But I just wanted to be sure that people understood because there has been a lot of discussion about this, and I understand stakeholders should have that. But uh, to a certain degree, uh, our committee, which is only an advisory committee, uh, we dealt with what we, we worked with what we had. What we did not have, at least according to this, all the dates on these letters, it's not until May, and obviously we know that the pandemic has thrown all sorts of, of uh, problems into things. So, you know, uh, obviously this thing, uh, and I think the town council has acted correctly in putting uh, this on hold, uh, and I have no problem whatsoever with proceeding with other options. I think the general public should know that our options are rather limited always have been in terms of sites. It seems to me we have three. To continue as is, work with Harbor House, actually probably only two at this point in time. So uh, that's all I have to say about it. I just think that uh, when you look back through the timeline that this committee has acted in a very responsible way. And I'd like to have that read into the record. 
Uh, do you have anything further at this time? Um, I'd go back a little bit to the uh, lease question. Uh, what goes with the uh, liveaboard designations and so forth? How has that worked into the uh, land lease as it's put in one? In other words, we have all sorts of regulations about how many liveaboards we can have and so forth. So our limit is we are permitted to have ten liveaboards, um, and there, which means that they are permitted to stay designated we have since designated them um, they are permitted to stay for longer than six months within a 12-month consecutive period that means no other vessel is permitted to stay longer than six months it, it's not leave a day come back it's you are only allowed if you're not a designated liveaboard only stay within six months of a 12-month consecutive period now nothing we... will change all we are is merging the three submerged land leases together so that means the only liveaboards we have are the ones that are legacy, so there will be no more liveaboards in the... In no, the that's not true. The, con the submerged land lease says that the town has to designate and review the 10 liveaboard contracts every six months, if not sooner. So we designate them, we review them, we can, if you're on that 10, that 10 list and We've had issues with you, delinquencies. We, we administratively can remove someone from that list, but at any given point in time, there's only permitted 10 liveaboards longer than six month period within Mooring Field. That'll include the new Mooring Field as well. As anticipated, yes. Thank you. Well, I'd like to say one thing about the financial reporting, if I may. Absolutely. Uh, we received. Uh, a graph in the usual manner and in a PDF format the figures for uh, a I believe it is <coughs> the this is sort of a continuing problem let me go back and say that seven years ago uh, when I came aboard the committee had the responsibility of fiscal or oversight for the uh, the operation of the Field and for being sure that the report to the state was done every year on a profit loss. Uh, that has been slowly worked out of the things over every review. The staff has removed those from our duties. However, we have still tried to keep up with what's going on, and I have uh, paired year to year the income. Uh, collections and the, the uh, occupancies and kind of trace of course they go up and down because you pay at a different time that you're there to sort of get an idea of how we were doing in our tracking um, and during that time Chelsea knows that every time we get that uh, I find that the graph is as it is this time doesn't reflect the May figures that are on the other side uh, some time back, there was a restriction of us getting this information. I had gotten it in an Excel format every month and very nicely and then corrected it and turned it back in. <laughs> uh, only little small errors in, in, in formulas, but it, and we couldn't review it. And I also have other um, master sheet to follow other factors through. And they now have sending out the format instead of in Excel, they're sending it out in, in PDF, which makes it impossible for me to follow the figures. Uh, I make a strong request that finance, who now apparently has that uh, responsibility, provide us with the Excel sheet prior to the meeting so we can check it out and, and look, at, look at it uh, and keep, uh, would like to keep our data going. Okay. I will pass that along to our finance director, and and I will let you know what what they say. Yes, I uh, I would say that we would like to push back if they are unwilling to do so. Well, I would like to request that because we have over the years gotten a year end report. Would like to request that when it comes. I mean, it's some months yeah, down the I Don't but believe we've gotten that in the last. We five haven't years. got. For maybe a couple of years, we used to get it pretty regularly. <laughs> but I would, I would like to request that from finance. We get a year-end so report. 
it's no longer in our, our it's been taken oh. out of our things, but uh, I would like to have it anyhow. Well, and, and I'll clarify, you weren't res this committee was not restricted on receiving that data. It's just the means of how you received it. So received in prior it, yeah. years, it was whomever was sitting in my position or your staff liaison was, was transpiring that information to you all. And since finance has made it clear that financial data needs to derive from the finance department. So each month that you receive this, this document, this PDF, I send the email to our finance department, request the information, they PDF it back, and then I simply attach it. So I am a means. I will, again, I will be the means for you all to pass. and pass it back, to pass okay. that request That's back. That's fine, but if it could be in uh, Excel format and we can be given the data we've been missing for the last several months. In other words, they that. basically send us the current Excel. I will pass along the request and let you know what they say. Okay, thank you. I don't think you've seen me over here. I've been <laughs> <laughs> for a while. Sorry, Roxanne. Going back to DACWA, uh, my question is, it appears that DACWA is going to be providing some of the workload that Matanzas was doing under our contract. Yes. So I just want to put it out there, if that is the case, that Matanzas be aware that I'm certainly going to be looking at that if we renegotiate a contract with them. Because the town is paying for DACWA, right? Correct. And DACWA is going to perform part of the duties that they've been performing it would seem that there should be some adjustment in our contract. And, and that will come, um, we have one more year that we can renew on the Matanzas contract, and that, that is up for renewal in November, and that is something I will be discussing with Doug on Monday. Um, and again, I reiterate that November 2021, we have to advertise for Upland Services if we do not have the facilities in-house. We have to do it before November. Exactly. The contract would have to be awarded by November of 2021. So we would have, we are forced to bid because there are no more extensions in the Matanzas. This, this one in November of 2020 is the last extension. So again, it would, it would be summer of 2021. We would be looking start that bid process again if, again if the services are not have the amenities one one last thing about DACWA part of their system incorporates a processing fee processing fee is three percent in discussing with the finance director and with our town attorney instead of increasing the rent for the mooring field, what we would look to do, and of course this has to be approved through the fee schedule, is to tack on a service fee that would encumber that 3%. That way it's a passed on to the end user. It's a separate, so it would not, that 3% would not be included in Matanzas's 55%. It would be a separate service fee that the town would be paying but instead, we're choosing to pass that along to the end. We identify that as DACWA fee. And it, it will be when we get the DACWA system set up. It'll have its own separate line item so we can run the reporting the on that. Right on it, so it won't be. It, it'll probably be some type of service fee, DACWA service fee or so, something of that nature. But that was approved by our town attorney and that that 3% would not count towards the revenue Five percent to Matanzas. Anything else? I have one last thing. Okay. <laughs> I keep saying that, but it keeps the list grows. We were sent the draft strategic plan. I know it's been a while since we looked at this butte. Um, if you could, between now and your next meeting, individually um, review, we filled in whose responsibility. Um, in a rough time timeline, um, I haven't truthfully, <clears throat> I have not touched this document in probably two months since I implemented, since I put in the names. Um, as you can see, I put PIO on there because we hadn't had, we hadn't hired Jenny yet. So um, review this, 
Uh, if you would like to meet with myself um, or Austin and discuss, you're more than welcome to. Um, we'd hopefully be looking to, within the next meeting or two, um, look for a motion from you all to approve this document. But I think this is a good step, um, big picture of moving Mooring Field into the 21st century. And when we look through it, if we have some concerns, contact me. Um, we approve with with. Give me an email. Give me a call. Stop. We can set up a meeting. Like, you can meet with me. Other than this thing, we approve or whatever. Yeah, but we should discuss it with you. Discuss it with me, and then what I can do is I can, um, if, if we agree, I can make a note and update it, and then I, when okay. before you do approve it, I can just say, hey, I met with X. Um, we discussed and thought this would be better suited than what was originally proposed. Anything else? <laughs> this is a long meeting because we haven't met for what? It's February? So. Okay. Um, Upland service provider update. We sort of had that, I guess. No, I'm sorry. Expansion of the mooring field update. Have one more. We sort of had. Okay. I'm sorry. You want to go back to mooring field and staff report? Okay. So um, we implemented it this year, but you'll see it in the proposed budget. We separated the mooring operations from just general maritime. So um, we'll have, in, in any expenses that are truly mooring field related, get charged to mooring operations. If there's a channel marker that goes down, that's going to get charged to maritime. So, so, where in the past, the public docks or the piers or anything waterway related was all encompassing in maritime, we've tried to separate the two. Um, so, in, in the budget, you'll see the proposed budget for mooring operations and the proposed budget for maritime. So I wanted to. Be well, and that would be really helpful for us to, yes. if we can get reports and budgets and stuff to really see where we are with that. Exactly. That's good, though. That's a long time coming. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, oh. expansion of the mooring field. We sort of had that update because we've talked about the um, binding of the land leases. Is there anything else to report on that? That's probably where we are. The only on the add-on list um, in that ten million dollar loan that um, has been discussed for all three projects, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars to. Um, install, procure, and install 19 new systems um, of, uh, for this expansion. So, uh, again, with the budgeting process, that will be discussed and either approved or not approved. But um, that that includes the you know, the actual work of going and installing um, the anchor, is it the anchor? What is it? Uh, the Healy coils. The Healy coils in the ground, and then it's the, the procurement of the entire system, um, and then, of course, the labor to do so. And that would, ha that would of course, be bid out if, if that is the path council chose to move forward with. That's a while down the road, though. Yes, we, we still have haven't lease. received the permit. Right. Anything else on the expansion? Upland service provider update. We've talked a lot about that already um, with building kind of on hold and Chelsea is going to, on Monday to Harbor House. Um, and we, I forwarded letters that Doug sent out to the council with to the committee with the, with do not respond to me. So People should have this. That time, he, send that to me, and I'll, I'll send it out. Yeah. So, I, I, is there anything further than where we are with with what we've already discussed? Actually, I have one thing. Uh, once you meet with Doug, or go over and look at Harbor House. I know we can't go as a group. Is can we go over and identify ourselves to someone at Harbor House and take an individual tour? Or could I you will, at least bring that up and see if that's I will possible? mention that to him and, and just say that there is interest of this committee. Um, that's what I'm hearing. I've heard that from a couple of you now. So, um, and, and we'll see. Anything else? 
Anything else? I do I did receive um, a sticky note prior to this meeting starting <laughs> from our finance department that the year to date revenues for the mooring field is one hundred and twenty nine thousand one hundred and it looks like a or six or two one hundred twenty dollars or one hundred twenty six dollars I can't tell. The end of May. That was I he didn't write he just put year to date. Insufficient information. <laughs> and then last fiscal year's numbers was were one hundred and fifty five thousand nine hundred and fifty seven dollars. So that's sufficient information. Give me Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> give us I just sent a message back. Right. <laughs> it was one twenty nine one hundred. One twenty nine one twenty. And what was the second one? Uh, it was last fiscal year's uh, revenues, mm -hmm. which was 155957 Oh, sounds like they had last year. Oh, but fiscal year is yeah, end of June. Fiscal year. Okay, never mind. Right? Fine. End yeah. of June? Right. No, fiscal year is September, September 30th. End of September. Okay, September we're on track. Uh, this lags a little bit, so it yeah, isn't showing that. yet. That 40 is going calendar. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else under? Service provider. Member items and reports. Mike? I think. Ed? Sam? Uh, Sam, for the record. South winds, it looks like uh, we were in on March. We had the wrong page, but we had a nice quarter page ad. And then I didn't pick up the hard copy. I couldn't find it. But it looks like for April, we got a full page ad, at least in the electronic one. So. I believe I believe that's um, where there were a change of ownership and then some hiccups with the procurement of that. Um, they promised a full page ad, um, but hopefully we can uh, our new PIO get some more we'll advertising pushed out, and then with Docwa coming into play. Um, yourself a favor over the next you know month or so just go on Docwa's website and see how many other marinas are um, use, utilizing their system. That's, that's a lot of advertisement that uh, would come with a package. I have a question uh, for my member item. Um, I usually do a budget right around now, don't I? Uh, the budget has already been submitted. Already been done. Yes. I incorporated, uh, we, we were. Kind of what we did last year. We were told there was no increase to maintain what we had. Um, so. Funding for the ca uh, Cruisers Appreciation Day was I put some money in there for okay. that for the advertising and advertising and that's what we usually do. Yes. Great. Yes. Okay. Exactly. I have one more item. A little awkward, but <laughs> it, it keeps being mentioned. Um, about ten years ago, the it's ironic it's the sandpaper because we were just read an article from the sandpaper. About ten years ago, someone known the sandpaper retired wrote a big article. Um, there was a lot of controversy about him throwing alcohol party. But the other part of the article that got my attention was how he had been operating illegally out of the Anchorage, running a charter business, and bragging about it. I know this because that was my competition at the time. And we were doing everything correctly with permits and everything. And I don't know why, um, I don't know there is some kind of location, but I am kind of familiar. You have, if you're going to run a charter business, I'm not sure what's in our lease or whether he's just saying that that's his location where he lives or he has a land location. But hopefully, there isn't an issue with running a business off an anchorage, or maybe that's not the case. Anchorage or in the mooring field? In the mooring field. I'm sorry. That, that, is, that is a concern because there is specific language in our submerged land lease that we will be looking into. Okay. I haven't brought it up for like 30 years, <laughs> but it keeps being brought up by, by him. So maybe that's something that needs we'll to look be into. Out. Absolutely. That's it. Greg, do you have something? Good. Public comment. Is there any public? My name is Lori Russell, and uh, I'm an island resident as well as the manager for Marina Village. I think they had some questions about um, the new bathroom facilities. 
Um, they were built when the restaurant opened at the end of last year, last two weeks of December. And it is always available for walkabout traffic. And like he said, there are three men stalls, three women, and a family one there. Um, I also I see a lot more development coming for a walkabout. So we also have Margaritaville that looks pretty darn good that they'll be passing, and I'm sure that size structure will also have additional bathrooms. But I think the issues of bathrooms should be resolved for people that want to come down and visit. Um, what I hear now are showers and facilities for a very small amount of people, which uh, is a great amount of people that own. I actually live at a marina. I live at Island Bay. Not on a boat, but I live in a little place next to it. So it was um, eye-opening to hear this morning. So I appreciate all that I, I learned today from all of you. One is making sure that the dumping and all of that is taken care of because I come from the state of Maine has very strict laws, very clean, although very cold. That's why I'm here. Um, and I'd like to see, as you know, in the last few years, we've suffered a lot on this area for our, the, our water quality. So hopefully that's going to be going in the right direction on that. Um, the only other thing I think um, was in question are the views or ability to have beautiful selfies. If anyone has not been down to the, to the waterfront recently, with the new restaurant of Snug Harbor, with um, the location of Nervous Nellies, they have also built out an extension of their docking. Um, and I see a lot of people walking down there admiring the views. Um, I also uh, am very involved in the um, Christmas parade where thousands of people come down through there. Thousands of people. Uh, any of the bigger events that are held down in that location. That structure that was originally, or that has been um, in the works for Bay Park, would never would have actually blocked many of people's ability to enjoy that. But with that said, with 800 plus owners that I work with, I also sell all the real estate at Marina Village. Um, I hear it daily. You heard anything else? So uh, we have thousands that travel into us, as well as. Uh, the seating capacity for Nervous Nellies is, what, 300, 500? Go off. And then you have Snug Harbor, Snug Harbor that has more than 250. If you think of the thousands of people in Harbor House alone, the people that come and go because they're rentals as well, are huge compared to, I think we can find better facilities for the groups of people, a small group of people, to take care of your needs on the boat. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. It was fun listening to you today. Anybody else? You can follow up on Harbor House. If you, you said you had a couple questions you'd like to dialogue back and forth, she may have answered the restroom questions. Um, but have you, have you guys received this from Doug that shows everything? Okay. Um, I think. With that proposal, there's that space there is about 24 by 30, I think. There's also room for an office next to it that would come in off a separate entrance. It would be what fronts on First Street, if you haven't been down there. Um, so directly across the street from Nervous Nellies, there's a blue peak in the building on the first floor, small peak. It would basically be from that peak going to the, I think, to the east towards Matanzas is where the space is. Doug. I believe also that that's where the service department runs. The far part of it, and I'm thinking the far part of it that he's showing here may even take some from the service department. He's talking about moving the service department around. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So there are some options there space wise. Um, unfortunately, you brought up the island sandpaper earlier, and they're potentially going out of business. I think they announced their closure here in July. I know they're up for sale. I don't know that they're going to or not sell. I know they own the, they have the, the suite next to the one that Doug has available. So there's a potential that in July that space could become available as well. Just something to put out there. I don't know how much space the town needs. Um, I think the original was to get a couple more showers. Would that be accurate relative to the two that's there? So maybe four showers, five showers, and laundry facilities. So <clears throat> in the island sandpaper, the open area that Doug has now, and taking part of the service area, I'm guessing he might move it over to maybe where your current services are. 
there's probably a fair amount of space there. And you were wondering if you could get keys to get in there. I'm sure Doug probably doesn't have a problem with it individually if they go over. You've, he's got keys, and the lady at the front desk, I'm sure Cassie could probably, there could be arrangements made that the front desk of the Harbor House has got a key, and if you guys need to get in, I would think they'd be more than happy to put it to you. That space, I believe, I think he first reached out in January. I might be wrong on that, but we, as Harbor House owners, were working with Doug, use that space as a weight room facility, an exercise facility. And when Doug realized the need for mooring services was changing, stopped communication with us for the opportunity in case morning service up or the upland services were needed as a harbor house owner we'd rather have an exercise room we'd also step back make the space available for the upland services i just wanted to let you know that if you have any questions the answer thank you todd thank you timing. <laughs> wow beautiful <laughs> timing Hi. Hello. Hi, my name is Tyler Lemmer. I'm one of the owners of Nervous Nellies. Uh, I'd just like to thank you guys for allowing us to be here to, to kind of see how um, things are developing. And uh, I look forward to being of any assistance with uh, this process. Uh, obviously, the construction of that building would directly affect our business. Um, you know, I would say that it would be close to a million dollars a year in lost sales from loss of view would kind of equate to about 10 to 15 full-time jobs a year uh, for people that work in the restaurant. Um, I'd just like to add that our restrooms and our restaurant have always been open to the public. Um, we don't turn people away when they come in to use the bathroom. Uh, and we have four and two women's restrooms. Uh, that's all I have. And thank you for allowing me to be here. Your name again, please? Tyler Lemmer. Tyler. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I appreciate all the all the interest, all the people that are here that spoke or did not speak today. We we always appreciate people coming to our meetings. Um, next meeting agenda. Before you jump into the agenda, okay. why don't you tell me if you all want to? Can, I know you normally take the summer off because there are many of you that travel during our current state of affairs, you may not be doing that. So if you want to continue with our typical, typically scheduled meetings, um, I need to know that before we set the agenda. Are you traveling? Yeah, we, I can do July and then I'll okay. be going August, September and October. Heard it keep caught up and not get well <laughs> I I think we should have a July meeting just because we've missed several and there's a bunch of stuff kind of happening um, so I would at least like to have July and we may not have August um, but you know with with this the thing starting with the Harbor House and looking at it and and DACWA and some of the other issues that we kind of have going I anticipate it wouldn't be as long as this but since we really haven't met for several months I would like to if the other members agree with that I would too. Who wants us to go over this too? Okay. Right? It will be July. Do you want us to do this in July? To discuss yeah. it? Wednesday July 15th. And certainly need to talk about the Upland Service. There was something that kind of popped in my head that I thought we should discuss. I suppose Doc, what could be on there, but but that's part. Every almost everything is during is in the mooring field report that that we're doing. But um, anybody anything that we should add in? One thing we didn't discuss today was in anything going ahead with the proposal for the new dinghy dock. If there's anything going ahead with that at Bayside, yeah. Um, we have drawn up some plans. Um, I believe we may have have to confirm with with Coastal to see if if we had re remitted submitted the permit prior to council putting a halt to this project. Um, but essentially, that small finger pier would and the marginal dock would connect. Like Harbor has done with Bayside with Nervous Nellies and and the perpetual easement. And connect it to 
underneath the bridge. So um, I th the only thing we've done at this point, at a minimum, which I have to confirm, is apply for the permits through DEEP. Is it contingent upon building something at Bayside or is it totally independent? Um, that permitting process is totally independent from Bayside. Of course, as we all know, permitting takes over a year. And I know that the Army Corps of Engineers has had a change of staff, and so um, add that to the mix, and it takes even longer. One other thing, maybe related but unrelated to you all, um, the boating restricted areas for the back bay where the, the speeding vessels um, during peak season, we had put out a... Uh, Letters of request for letters of interest within our current pool of qualified vendors. We had received a handful of them. Um, in the meantime, our environmental specialist, Chad, um, found an opportunity in working with FWC to pursue, in, instead of pursuing the state statute and restricting vessel speeds, and all the hoops and loops that come with that, with justifying and documentation and studies and et cetera, um, an alternative method is through uh, manatees and, and the deaths of manatees and um, how protected species and et cetera. Um, so I know that he has um, sent a draft application through FWC and they're vetting it, uh, kind of giving some preliminary feedback before we do the formal application. Um, to reduce the speeds in the back bay year-round, protect the manatees. Um, any chance of extending things or looking at Portage Point, uh, the entrance area? I'll have to find out. I, I believe it included the entire back bay. I don't know if he extended it to Bowditch all the way to Big Carlos Pass, but um, I can find out. I know we put together some some put together some um, charts and graphs. I can find out and let you know at the next. The, the idea of 100 feet extension so that they don't don't all crash at the point there. I don't. I don't. I'm sorry, Ted, but I don't think that he uh, applied for any extensions of zones. Uh, it's just the classifications of the zones that we currently have. I don't know that it's any new. It's just changing what we if have. If anybody would have that in their head somewhere, see, see a place to put it, it would be nice to increase that, particularly during season. It would be nice to extend the no-egg zone. That's what I'm trying to say. Thank you for saying it better. <laughs> okay, so... Does anybody see anything we need to add to the agenda for next time? What we have here. If you want, I can do a separate line item, as you guys stated, for DACWA and the management plan. Got enough answer. Then we'll keep. It's totally your, it's your agenda. You tell me how you want it. Yeah. Well, DACWA and and what the manage management plan, the strategic planning session. Oh the yes, we do need to do a strategic plan. Let's add. That was what I was thinking about. Let's do at least the strategic plan one. Separate. The DACWA we can be under okay. either Mooring Field or Upland Service Provider. Okay. Um, I think we can add it because it's probably going to be on for several months. If but the DACWA. DACWA, yeah. Might as okay. well add it as a separate item. Yeah. Uh, let's just let's add the let's add the strategic plan, but not the doc okay. one. I mean, almost anything can be under the mooring field thing because it is. But uh, so what? What when? What's the date in July? It's July fifteenth, the third 15th. Wednesday. Okay. The fifteenth. All right. And unless there's anything, I think we're adjourned. If anything Sam. comes up in the meantime. No, you have my contact information. Reach out to me, please. Yeah, I move for adjournment. Hi. And thank you all for being here. Appreciate your interest. Our one meeting. Very nice. I know. So we added. Man, that was what I was thinking about. Strategic plan. Thanks, Roxanne. Thank you, Roxanne. He's the one with the vote. She's the one with.